Look at this comment. That's crazy. Wow, do you think that'll work? I don't know, but eight ounces of PVC glue is about eight or 10 bucks, where 2.5 ounces of 3D gloop is about 25 bucks. I wonder if they have the same active ingredient. We're gonna find out, but before we do that, make sure you like and follow. <laughs> What is the active ingredient in PVC glue? The active ingredient in PVC glue is usually tetrahydrofuran, THF. This solvent softens the PVC material, enabling the surfaces to bond as the glue dries and the THF evaporates. What is the active ingredient in 3D gloop? The active ingredient in 3D gloop is a blend of solvents, including tetrahydrofuran, THF, and acetone. These solvents help to chemically bond 3D printed parts by slightly dissolving the surface, creating a strong bond as it dries. Interesting. They both have tetrahydrofluoro blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whatever she said. <laughs> yes. Tetrahydrofuran is quite versatile. It's a strong solvent that's effective in bonding and fusing various materials, which is why it's used in both PVC glue and 3D gloop. It's great for creating strong, durable bonds in plastics. So most of these products, they actually have SDSs, which is a safety data sheet. And I'm sure there's some law somewhere around how they have to publish these safety data sheets. But what's really cool is in these safety data sheets, they actually have to list the ingredients in the uh, formulas. And I am no chemist, but we can see here what is in the Ote uh, PVC cement. And we could also check out what is in the 3D Gloop uh, PLA formula and we can look at that safety data sheet and we can see what's in there. Now as you can see there are some things that are listed as trade secrets so I'm not really sure what that means and like I said I'm not a chemist and here are the percents by weight. So let's test out our 3D glue versus our PVC glue. Now like I said this is about $25 the smaller one. This bigger one I think was like $40. This uh, primer and PVC glue, and this is the medium grade one that does ABS, was about $13 for these two. So usually a bottle of uh, PVC glue is somewhere between eight and 10 bucks, depending on the brand and some other things. So let's get this open and we're going to, actually let me show you what I'm gonna do. We're going to actually take, this was from our test of different types of actually 3D printing glue. This was actually our 3D glue one and we could not break the bond. It actually broke by twisting apart. We were able to snap it, but it didn't break the bond. It actually broke the PLA. We're gonna use the same sort of test, but we're gonna just sort of recycle these since we've destroyed them. We have the ones where we used um, liquid nails that didn't bond. We're just gonna basically take a couple of these. We're gonna bond them together with the glue or with the PVC glue. We're gonna uh, clamp them and leave them overnight. And then we're gonna test them with the same sort of test to see if we'd snap it apart. So while we're bonding everything, let's talk about how 3D Gloop and PVC Glue work. 3D Gloop and PVC Glue serve similar purposes in bonding materials, but do it through different mechanisms. 3D Gloop is a specially formulated adhesive designed for 3D printed parts, particularly those made of plastics like PLA, ABS, and PETG. It works by slightly dissolving the surface of the plastic, creating a strong chemical bond between the pieces once it dries. PVC glue, on the other hand, is used primarily for PVC pipes and fittings, but there are also versions that can be used on ABS. It functions by softening the PVC surface, allowing the pieces to be fused together as the solvent evaporates, forming a solid bond. Both adhesives create strong durable bonds by chemically altering the surface of the materials they work with. 3D Gloop is designed specifically for 3D printed materials such as PLA, PETG, and ABS, while PVC glue is designed for PVC, CPVC, and other materials such as ABS, which is a common material that's used for 3D printing also. Now we are also gonna try one other test. We're gonna actually take these ends, we're gonna attach them to the PVC, and we're gonna see if 3D glue can actually bond PVC. I have some threads I'm gonna put on the end of this uh, 
pipe. And basically, we're going to see if we could pull off the uh, PVC glue or the 3D glue. Because I'm actually curious if 3D glue will bond PVC. Okay, we're going to leave this overnight and we're going to test them tomorrow morning. So we let these dry for a little over 24 hours. Now let's see if we can actually snap the bond apart. This is our 3D printed glue. We're going to do that one first. Okay, it actually broke the PLA. The bond actually held. So we're testing the PVC cement in three ways. This one is just the cement itself. This one is the activator with the cement on one side. And this one is activator on both sides and, um, you know, the cement on both sides. I didn't want to create any other mechanical sort of connection. I just wanted the uh, adhesive to do its job. So let's test out the PVC cement by itself. Okay, now what's interesting is it did, it looks like it did fuse it a little, but it actually came apart. So the bond didn't hold. Actually, mm, well here you can actually see where it melted a little of the PLA. Now let's try it with the primer on one side. Okay, once again, it actually, um, it actually you can see it melted, but it actually didn't break the PLA. The, the adhesive actually separated. Now this one's with primer on both sides and the PVC cement. Okay, and same thing happened. So basically you could see it did start melting the PLA a little bit. I don't know if you guys could see that, but the actual adhesive bond broke, not the PLA. So what's the conclusion? No matter how I tried using the PVC glue, it definitely, the adhesive actually broke. Now, PVC glue is not necessarily for PLA. It, you know, it is, it can be used for ABS because some piping is made for ABS. Now, remember too, it's also designed to line the inside of a, you know, a connector and the pipe to fit in and go on the outside of the pipe, which for us in 3D printing is more of a mechanical seal. So with the 3D printed loop, the adhesive actually held and we actually see the PLA breaking. Now remember, this is also 3D printed loop that is designed specifically for PLA. Whereas the PVC cement, even though it can be used on ABS, is not necessarily for PLA. Now we do have one more test. Let's see if 3D printed gloop could hold up on PVC. So this is our 3D gloop side and this is our cement side. Let's see if we could pull this off first. Nope. We're going to also try these vice grips to see if we could separate them. Let's try the PVC first. Nope. And let's try the 3D loop. Nope, so it seems like the 3D glue could actually hold PVC, but this would be some pretty expensive PVC cement for you to actually use. Obviously, the 3D glue held up much better on the PLA than the PVC cement, even though this was one designed for ABS. Now, I have to say the bond was pretty strong. It did come apart, but it was still a pretty strong bond. Totally feasible to use, it seems. Um, I would probably stick with the 3D Gloop, but once again, one of my favorites is the JB Weld, um, which if you saw the video on the last set of testing every glue, that one held up just as well as the 3D Gloop. So one of the things you may want to consider is the cost per ounce of the glue you're using, and is it good enough for the actual purpose of your uh, print and what you're trying to do? Once again, 3D Gloop, JB Weld and Super Glue seem to be the ones that hold up the best. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, keep on making.
Thank <laughs> you.